Milwaukee Emergency Center for Animals Television is brought to you by Haas, the Humane Animal Welfare Society of Waukesha County, leading the community in animal welfare and assuring sanctuary for animals in need. Metropolitan Fence, we're always on the level. And Camp Bow Wow, premier doggy day in overnight camps. Hammer is a little diabetic schnauzer that's had diabetes for some time and he's been on insulin. He has cataracts too, so he, he's pretty much almost blind. The owner wants to have cataract surgery on him, but he came in here because he actually fell down the stairs and uh, then had a lump on his head and little splotches all over his body which are bruising and uh, at first the owner brought him in for just for falling down the stairs but then we realized that wow all this uh, he had a hematoma on the top of his head and he had all little uh, ecchymosis we call it and petechial hemorrhages that are consistent with a platelet problem so we ran a platelet count on him and he had actually zero platelets his whole body system so he is a potential bleeder because of that and very serious um, bleeder and because he has no platelets at all so we're giving him a lot of different drugs to try to stop the immune system from destroying his own platelets but we're hopeful that we're going to be able to get this under control and the owner is going to come in today and see if uh, the platelets are, we have any platelets at all, because if we don't, then we're going to use another drug to try to combat this disease and try to get it under control. So his body, it's an immune-mediated disease, which is pretty common in people and in animals, and there's, it's idiopathic, so it's got no known cause for it. Just your own body reacts against your platelets and starts destroying them and then your body tries to make them but they can't keep up because the immune system destroys them so fast because they're tagged as abnormal so the spleen and the liver eats them up the body tries to produce new ones they're eaten up and then pretty soon the dog has no platelets left and those are the cells that help you clot your blood, so now he's having hemorrhages all over his body. My dog, Hammer, started bleeding uh, over the weekend, um, kind of unexplainably, I guess. He's diabetic, and so he gets insulin shots every day, but he was to the point where the shots weren't gushing blood, but they would just ooze a little bit, and then he would get what looked like a blood blister, you know, which I guess it was just pool of blood underneath it. And then he actually, uh, he actually stumbled and fell on the stairs Saturday morning early, bumped his head, and so he had a head bump. So, you know, it's kind of like, what can, uh, what else can happen? So I, I, I came in here thinking, you know, that he had a bump on his head and that he uh, uh, was bleeding a little bit, and uh, then I was told he had idio idiopathic thrombolytic purpura, I believe. So, of course, like everybody, I spent a lot of time on the internet looking it up and seeing that it's probably more common in people than it is in animals, but animals do get it. And generally speaking, it's uh, treatable and they do pretty well with it, but because Hammer's diabetic, it complicates things because the standard treatment for canines is steroids, and steroids are kind of like water and oil for a diabetic. So, that means you've got a much more involved case with a lot of monitoring and Hence, that's why he's still here. Hammer has had uh, transfusion, blood transfusion. He's had immunoglobulins, human immunoglobulins transfusion. Then he had a platelet-rich plasma transfusion. And then he had another blood transfusion. And that blood transfusion was very difficult to find. We had to go through four different donors to match him. Because of all the transfusions he had, he didn't cross-match to a donor. And we were getting frantic because he needed the blood again and we couldn't find a, a good donor because of his uh, 
uh, all the other transfusions and finally did and now his platelets he's got about 10 to 12 platelets per high power field that's almost normal it's in getting within the normal range and his blood cell count today was 25 so that's incredible so he's going home on a lot of immunosuppressive drugs so dad's going to be excited to take him so I can't believe I'm handing this doggy over to you. Oh, <laughs> You're going to miss him. Oh. Right? Look at you, Hammer. Today's show is brought to you by Haas, the Humane Animal Welfare Society of Waukesha County, Metropolitan Fence, and Camp Bow Wow. And now, a word from our sponsors. Welcome to Camp Bow Wow in Waukesha, the premier doggy day and overnight camp where a dog can be a dog. Our campers play all day in our four large indoor and four outdoor play yards. Watch your pup from anywhere in the world at our high-speed camper camps. Our certified camp counselors, spacious cabins with comfy cots, pup pools, and outdoor play equipment ensure that your pup has a great time. We're open 365 days per year for your convenience. Stop in for a tour and book a reservation for your dog's free day of camp. Visit campbowwow.com slash waukesha or call 262-547-WOOF for more information. At Metropolitan Fence, we have been keeping your children and pets safe in southeastern Wisconsin for over 27 years. We offer a full line of residential and commercial fencing from vinyl, wood, ornamental, and chain link. For a free estimate, please call us at 262-547-6001 or visit us online at metrofence.biz. And remember, we are always on the level. The Humane Animal Welfare Society of Waukesha is so much more than a shelter. Our adoption staff, animal caregivers, and behavior department ensure the best possible adoptive companion. Our spay-neuter programs actively combat pet overpopulation in our area, and our animal rescue team safely returns lost pets back home. Haas does one-on-one -on -one consultations, holds a variety of training classes and seminars, and even hosts camps for kids. Our shelter is and always has been open admissions and full service, providing resources for pets and their people for a happy lifetime together. Pause. We're building a society that's humane. Sporting, grooming, training, and more. When it comes to your pet, Animal Motel is their home away from home. At Animal Motel, we offer a top-of-the-line facility with boarding suites for both dogs and cats, outdoor play yards, a training hall, and so much more. Whether they're here for obedience training, grooming, or an extended stay, we promise your dog and cat will be part of our family. Animal Motel personalized care for your precious pets. Looking to get some training for your dog? For pet's sake is your one-stop dog training center. We offer all-inclusive obedience training, canine sports training, specialty classes, and more. We provide training classes in three convenient locations with our main facility in McGuanago, which boasts a fully matted 5,200 square foot training hall. While in McGuanago, check out our Bichon Buddy Rescue and take home your new pet. Bichon and Little Buddies Rescue takes in Bichons, other small dog breeds, and cats that need to be rehomed for various reasons. The entire nest of hornets came out and stung her in the face. So this is one of the most common things that we see, probably about 100 cases a week of uh, dogs that get stung. There, was, there were 30 or 40 around her face. I had to tackle her and uh, get, they were stuck in her fur, and so we were trying to get them out. Dogs are always nosing around, yeah. so they get stung in the face. So her face was really swollen when she first came in here, and then what we did was we gave her uh, a shot of steroids and a shot of Benadryl and the steroids act pretty quickly as you guys have yes. seen 
and then the Benadryl kind of is the long lasting effect and may cause her to be a little bit tired, but mm -hmm. um, it's scary, huh, when they come out. Yeah, you hate to see it. Yeah, yeah, I was just concerned, like, is she able to breathe, you know, is right. something going to happen, is she going to stop breathing, and so yeah. we wanted to get here as quick as possible. Right, and we always tell people that the scary thing is it's not the facial swelling, but then if it goes down into the throat, yeah. and then they can't breathe and you can't get here quick enough. Mm -hmm. So it's best to come as soon as possible and get them taken care of. It's a horrible disease. It rips open the gut and causes them to have severe vomiting, diarrhea. The animals become dehydrated very quickly and are painful. They're, uh, they're so sick that they can die within a couple days even. Bear came in yesterday and then the puppy just came in tonight. So Bear is actually getting a lot better, aren't you buddy? He doesn't look like he's feeling that great, but he's when he first came in, he was so dehydrated, he couldn't even hardly stand up. And now um, he's looking a little bit better. He hasn't had any vomiting today and just a little bit of diarrhea. Hi, Bear. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. Come here. Oh, you're okay, buds. You're okay. He's super scared. And then this guy just came in tonight. Hi baby. Hi baby. This is the one that's vaccinated. Hi baby. Hi buds. So this one's going through the initial stages of rehydration. Um, very dehydrated. Came in vomiting, diarrhea, just laying on the table when we admitted um, him. But uh, we'll get him hydrated through the night tonight and get him on IV antibiotics and IV drugs to stop the vomiting. I always say it's the ones that survive are it's based on the breed. So breed is a big factor. The immune system of pit bulls and uh, Rottweilers is very poor so they have a tendency to not do as well but it also depends on age and how big they are and how fat they are. If they're a super small animal or uh, very thin or very young, their tendency to not do as well is a lot uh, more common for them to succumb to the disease. So the name of the game is vaccinate your animals, that's for sure. So she did really well. Yeah, she did incredibly well. She had a lot of diarrhea here, and yeah, uh, like right that. in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then we put her on that uh, metronidazole, that IV uh, antibiotic, and the IV fluids, and then uh, drugs to stop the vomiting, and she ate this morning, and she was good. No more diarrhea, no more vomiting. So we're never going to really know what she got into. Like you said, she drank the mosquito she could have water. Yeah. She could have eaten that, whatever, that toxic uh, queen's and lace. Right. So we'll never know, but it really doesn't matter. All of these things are... Garter. Yes. So... No more running around by yourself. No uh, more I can't afford this ever. <laughs> she's going to be our last dog. And she's such a good dog. She's, I mean, she's your typical Labrador, you know? Yeah. Or, love, 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 love. Yes, I love everybody. Everybody. Give me the camera. <laughs> camera. And you know, most dogs, they'll come in here, I would say we get probably maybe 50 cases a week of dogs that ingest different things. And maybe about 20% of them we find out what they ingested, and the rest of the 80% we never find out. So we really treat them with supportive care, and most of them do pretty well. And here's your oh, metronidazole. That's the antibiotic and the anti-diarrhea medication. Um, and that will, you'll give that for uh, 10 days, I believe. We okay. Have that for. 
Now, when can I expect her to go poop again? Uh, this, that's a good question. This uh, drug really slows down the gastrointestinal so system. Stop. And you might not see stools for a few days. Okay. So I'm glad everybody. you guys made the decision to go ahead with treatment because I know it was, uh, it was hard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So he's got a couple problems, not only a nasal discharge, which is, makes it difficult for them to breathe because they're obligate uh, nasal breathers. So if they can't, if they have stuff in their nose and infection in their nose, then they really have a tough time breathing. We can open our mouths to breathe, they cannot. So this is what we do, we put them on IVs, we syringe feed them, get nutrition going, and get their GI tract moving for gastric stasis. It takes time. You have to be very patient when you work with uh, animals. All right, and this is a big bunny. I mean, <laughs> I'd say pleasantly plump. Good, huh? Yeah, yeah well, he's taking so it pretty well. So that's a good thing. even if he can't breathe that well, he's still taking the uh, syringe feeding pretty well. The bigger ones with the loppy ears like this are usually more calm and usually more easygoing. The small little tiny dwarf rabbits are the ones that are a little bit more hyper excitable. But you can see he's taking his syringe feedings well. He took a large amount. That's good and then we'll wait for him to start producing stools and once he's taking food like this and producing stools, then usually we can send him home. Here at Pet Supply Port in Sockville, Wisconsin, we recognize that pets are part of the family. That's why we strive to offer the best quality pet food and pet supplies at the most affordable prices. From frozen raw diet and wholesome products to educational seminars and pet total wellness, Pet Supply Port is leading the way when it comes to pet food and pet supplies in the Four County area. Log on to learn how Pet Supply Port can help your pet live a happy and healthy life. PetSupplyPort.com Welcome to Camp Bow Wow in Waukesha, the premier doggy day and overnight camp where a dog can be a dog. Our campers play all day in our four large indoor and four outdoor play yards. Watch your pup from anywhere in the world on our high-speed camper cams. Our certified camp counselors, spacious cabins with comfy cots, pup pools, and outdoor play equipment ensure that your pup has a great time. We're open 365 days per year for your convenience. Stop in for a tour and book a reservation for your dog's free day of camp. Visit CampBowWow.com slash Waukesha or call 262-547-WOOF for more information. At Metropolitan Fence, we have been keeping your children and pets safe in southeastern Wisconsin for over 27 years. We offer a full line of residential and commercial fencing from vinyl, wood, ornamental, and chain link. For a free estimate, please call us at 262-547-6001 or visit us online at metrofence.biz. And remember, we are always on the level. When it comes to your pet's health, proper nutrition is vital to a long and healthy life. That's why American Natural Premium products are growing in popularity at your local pet food store. American Natural Premium uses whole ingredients including meat and balanced protein. Best of all, it's quality pet food at an affordable price. If your dog is itching and scratching, has runny eyes, or does the butt scoot boogie across your floor, it's a good chance your dog has food allergies. Log on to AmericanNaturalPremium.com to learn about premium pet food without the premium price tag. Actually, I just got him a month ago. Um, we're currently in training um, right now, working together. Um, I'm probably getting a little more training than he is. He came from Germany knowing a whole lot of stuff, and I'm catching up learning how to work with him um, as my canine partner. I've always loved dogs, loved animals. Um, I've been working at the House of Correction. I've been there 16 years now. Right, it's a long time. Um, I got very involved in training in the beginning of my career. Um, so I spent 
15 out of the 16 years uh, doing a lot of training stuff and although I still love the training uh, I figured this was just the next logical step to, uh, to get a canine partner to get involved in training with them. He uh, comes home with me every evening and is uh, part of the family at night. When he's at home he's just a regular dog and then at work he's uh, a partner, a canine partner. This is uh, Capney and Capney is about a uh, nine-year-old uh, dog that it's a puggle or a puggle mix, pug mix and came in for seizure and he had four seizures. One on Saturday and three on Sunday. So the owner was presented here uh, for control of seizures and we're suspecting that it's an epileptic because he has his blood work is all normal and he's never had seizures before and he was normal before the seizures and he's normal after the seizures. Likely an epileptic and he'll go home on phenobarbital so this is it all. Kidney. Hi, Kidney. Isn't he cute? You are a doll, aren't you, huh? And this is a diabetic kitty that were, uh, got constipated, which is pretty common in diabetics, just like in people. And uh, he's a little bit on the heavier side, too, as you can see. <laughs> um, so, of course, Obese cats, obese older cats, as in people, you have more of a tendency towards uh, getting constipated. And then he's got diabetes on top of it, so we're trying to help regulate him. The medicine is makes his stools uh, softer and it tastes sweet, but cats don't like sweet medications. Dogs do, but cats don't. Oh, it's like, gonna make you feel lot. better. Yeah, right. He says. <laughs> yeah, this is a very sick kitty that came in for being blocked. He's got a urinary blockage, and uh, he had been sick for a couple days, so they caught him a little bit late in the blocking process. So his bladder got so big that. Um, he couldn't urinate for a day or so, and because of that, his uh, he became uh, his kidney values became very high, and his potassium is also very high. So he's super sick. So now we're collecting urine, we're giving him fluids and flushing out his system, and then collecting urine. As you can see, it's pretty bloody urine down here. And they're just getting some repeat blood work on him to see where his values are now, like his potassium and blood glucose. And we'll give him fluids until his kidney values come down to normal and his potassium comes down to normal. This is Albert. Albert is a newly diagnosed uh, diabetic that became ketoacidotic, so that means he got so sick so quickly from his diabetes that he developed ketones in his blood system and he had to be treated for several days here to wash the ketones out of his system. And uh, now we're just trying to figure out what dose he needs to be on of insulin. He's actually better, but uh, we have to get him on his NPH, which is the regular insulin that he'll be on when he goes home, and they'll give him twice a day injections at home now. The owners will learn how to uh, give him insulin for the rest of his life. 663. 663. Okay, so he's now back to requiring insulin again. Uh, dog sugar is the same as humans. It's a around 100, 90 to 100, 120 at the most, but he's super high, so we're having problems regulating it because he was just producing ketones and he was sick, and then once you get him over that sickness, now we're kind of playing back and forth with uh, getting him off of the regular insulin, which was being given as a constant rate infusion over the last two days, 
to now getting them switched over to the sub-Q insulin, which is called NPH insulin, and that's what he will go on for a lifetime now. A diabetic dog or diabetic cat is uh, a lot for the owners because some of them are managed quite easily. Some of them have other disease processes going in their body, like this uh, little dog has, uh, is an Addisonian. So he was treated for Cushing's disease, and then he was turned into an Addisonian dog. So he's on steroids, which makes his diabetes very difficult to treat. So he's got several things going on in his body, and that's why he's uh, such a hard dog to try to control with his diabetes. We're retired, so he's with us 24-7, which makes it even more difficult. It's not like he's a stay-at-home dog. Uh, he's a dog that's is with us constantly. So when he's out for four or five days with an illness, he, he's he's emotionally confused, and uh, and they provide they pro they understand that here, and they and they understand our attachment, and they understand that uh, we're pretty aggressive when it comes to how well our dog is handled. There are, there are facilities that are nothing more than, in our opinion, medical puppy mills. Um, and who are more interested in upselling you than treating your dog? But we, we don't we don't find that here. We find that the care that's provided is exceptional and necessary. Today's show was brought to you by Haas, the Humane Animal Welfare Society of Waukesha County, leading the community in animal welfare and assuring sanctuary for animals in need. Metropolitan Fence, we're always on the level. And Camp Bow Wow, premier doggy day and overnight camps. 